stone rolling. I see a stone rolling. I don't care who you were this morning. I don't care who you were yesterday. There's resurrection power. There's resurrection power. There's resurrection power. There's resurrection power. Sorry, you have to sing that. It doesn't work if I, if I sing it by myself. Sorry. Sorry, Holy Ghost. You look bored. Oh, we have a mass choir. What I'm prophesying over you is I was sitting here and I saw a stone roll away. I don't care who you were five minutes ago. The same spirit that quickened Jesus Christ from the dead. Help! The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in the building this morning. I see the Lord augmenting your expectation, stretching out your expectation of heaven. If you're here for another Sunday, Go back to your car, start it, turn it off, walk back into the room. This is an unusual place. Every time you come in contact with the king, it's an opportunity for the kingdom to be released. Help! And I feel him stretching our expectation this morning. This resurrection power that's here for us, but I won't sing about it by myself. We good? Somebody's got to sing it over themselves. All I hear in the spirit is, don't look for me in the grave. I don't live there anymore. Don't look for me in the grave. I don't live there anymore. Yeah. Don't look for me in the grave. I don't live there anymore. Yeah. Don't look for me in the grave. I don't live there anymore. Don't look for me in the grave. I don't live there anymore. Don't look for me in the grave. I don't live there. Y'all not singing loud enough. Don't look for me in the grave. I don't live there anymore. Yeah. Don't look for me in the grave. I don't live there. Don't look for me in the grave.
Some of you need this. Some of you haven't lived for six months. Some of you have been in survival mode all year. I just hear the Holy Ghost saying, don't look for me in the grave. Yeah. I don't live there anymore. Yeah. Woo. We're going to sing that bridge again. I felt a thing for infertility. Real quick, I saw a baby. I feel like one or two of you have been leaving, been believing God for a long time for children. And I just want to sing this bridge just in faith for breakthrough. <laughs> in faith for healing of your wounds, healing of your loins. Thank you for life, life, life in abundance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels like an obstacle thing. You don't even pray about it anymore, some of you. It's been so long. You say, well, maybe God's forgotten. And I feel like as a church, we're supposed to surround that thing. And anytime we deal with infertility in the natural, we come against infertility in the spirit. Every dream, every vision, every calling, every destiny in this house, there shall be fruition. There shall be fruitfulness. And we're going to boast about our God in the face of this giant. You ready? We say, oh, you are, come on, a miracle working God, you are a miracle working God, you are a miracle working God, you Just me and you, just the heart song singing out of tune. I remember the simplicity, just to feel you here was everything. Stunned by your beauty. This is my.
just to honor you and bring you praise like a fragrance broken on the floor may my worship be child again full of wonder full of innocence before anything got in the way any dream or any accolade you make it
has an authority in that place to confess. It's just all about you. No matter what's in front of me, it's about you, it's about you. It's about you, it's about you. It's about you, it's about you, Jesus. <laughs> we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. And we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you for the cross. 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 La, 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 I don't want anything but you. You're more than everything comes to All of the things I thought I wanted don't come close to no more. Now that I'm yours Our love is a secret that I find. I'll spend forever in the pleasure I found looking in yours. Give me You 
there is but one thing more. There is but one thing more come to. Man crucified long ago. of God in one man, <laughs> the nature of man in its fullness, I don't think I'll quite understand, Jesus, there is nothing, no one Not a thing in this world could compare. I could search far and wide. I'd be unsatisfied. For there is just nobody else. There is a king on the throne. His voice like the rushing of waters. His eyes melt the heart made of stone. Yeah. Jesus, there is a king. There is a king on the throne. His voice like the rushing of waters. His eyes melt the heart made of stone. Yeah. Jesus, oh Jesus, the hope of the world. <laughs> Jesus, the way to the Father. <laughs> Every promise fulfilled through Jesus. Well, there is just nobody there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And nothing and no one will ever satisfy me the way that you do. I've sunk it deeper and I'll sing it once more. And Jesus, there's no one like you. Oh, Jesus, there's no one like you. What a joy it is, what a privilege, just to love you, just to love you, what a joy it is, what a privilege, just to love you, yeah. Just to love you. What a joy. What a joy it is. What a privilege. Just to love you. Yeah, yeah. Just to love you. I give up.
give all. And I'll give all my days to simply finding ways to say I love you. To say I love you. So what a joy. What a joy it is. What a privilege just to love you. Just to love you. I give all. Can I give all of it? Yeah, yeah. To simply find ways to say I love you. Yeah, yeah. To say I love you. What a joy. What a joy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a privilege. Just to love you. Just to love you. Sing, I'll give all my days. And I'll give all my days to simply finding ways to say I love you. Yeah, yeah. To say I love you. Oh, my heart yearns and it. Oh, it burns and it. Just to love you. My heart yearns and aches. Oh, it burns and breaks. Just to love you. Just to love you. My heart. My heart yearns and aches. Oh, it burns and breaks. Just to love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to love you, just the voices, my heart yearns. My heart yearns. to 
hear you say that I'm afraid. You are my desire. No one else will do. Nothing else. Oh, nothing else can take your place. Woo. You feel the warmth of your embrace. Help me find my way. Bring me back. It's nothing, no one else cares. Not a thing in this world could compare. Yeah. I could search far and wide. I'll be unsatisfied. For there is just nobody there. Nothing and no one. Nothing and no one will ever satisfy. Satisfy me the way that you do. I've sung it before and I'll sing it once more. Won't Jesus and no one like you? I have sung it before. And I'll sing it once more. Jesus is no one like you. You guys, we have an opportunity to surrender all over again. I'd like every person that's here to go ahead and stand up. And I want the lights turned up. Let's stand up. It's a moment of forsaking everything except Jesus. So just stick your arms up in the place of surrender. Surrender. The thing is, is when you forsake everything else, Psalms 103 happens. He loads you with his daily benefit package. is worth everything. He is the full benefit package. even more than that. And I think it's just time to surrender all over again. There's actually people in this room, there's things that are going to break permanently in your life today. How that's going to happen is we're going to break the alabaster jar of oil 
everything that you have, we're going to break it on the feet of Jesus. And you're going to see things broken in your life. And then he broke his body so you could be whole and new. This is the only way. He is the only way. You surrender everything. And he surprises you with something above and beyond what you could ever ask or think of. You see, even in your just shuffling around in the dust, you know, we were created from the dust. But we're also God breathed in his image, in his likeness. And when that curse came down on the devil, on your belly you should go. In the dust, licking the dust. I just want to encourage you, even you just shuffling around, being connected to Jesus, you're serving the devil a full course meal of dust. But even better, you don't need to shuffle around. You can dance around. And sometimes the breakthrough that you need in your life is to just kick up a little dust and realize that Jesus is the head. You're his body. And that thing, the devil, is still underneath your feet. So if you just feel like there's a, maybe you've been feeling insecure, maybe you've been feeling defeated, maybe you've just been feel, dealing with a sickness, maybe you've been dealing with an addiction, maybe you've been dealing with something that is not your portion. I want you to just lift both hands to heaven right now. the place that we're seated with him in heavenly places according to Ephesians. Oh, Holy Spirit. Jesus. Thank you that you're purifying your bride. Thank you that you've put all of us here in this place for a reason. And it's to spread the happy news of our good God, Jesus Christ. I just speak in empowerment, and if you need to know Jesus, he's knocking on the door of your heart right now. He's not a brutal dictator that's going to kick in the door. That's the world system. He's the one saying, will you let me in? Will you let me in? All you need to do is open the door of your heart. Allow the King of glory to flow into you. And I can guarantee you will never be the same again. I just want to take three more minutes again. Lift your hands to heaven. And with one loud voice, let's just sing this song one more time. The full embrace. Come on, just lift your hands up. We're going to let it burn and ache for him, just to know him.
Can you sing that for me, Warren? Lead us. Just who loves you, just who loves you, my heart, my heart yearns and breaks, oh it burns and breaks, just who loves you, just who loves you, my heart, my heart yearns and Oh, it burns and breaks Just who loves you Just who loves you One last time My heart yearns and breaks Oh, it burns and breaks Just who loves you Just who loves you So, Holy Spirit, we just take a moment corporately in this place to surrender all over to you again. What a privilege. What an opportunity. Thank you for loading us up with your benefit package daily. Thank you for breaking the burdens, breaking the yokes, breaking the chains. Chains broken. I thank you for the gift of salvation. I just thank you for every person in this place. That this is a day of encounter. This is your day of encounter. I thank you that no person will leave the same. That we are in this place going from glory to glory. Now in this transition, what I want to do is I want you just to find the people around you, introduce yourself to them, find out what happened to them in this service right now so far. <laughs> Pray for them if they need prayer. Or hug them, get to know them. There's a bunch of amazing people around here. We're just going to take a minute to get to know one another and pray for one another. Find out what happened in their life. And we're going to transition to the next part of the service. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing.
Okay, everybody, we're going to move on to our next form of worship, our next form of loving him with our tithes and offerings, our gifts and giving. Such a holy moment. We don't have to leave this place. We just transition to the next the next thing. There's so much love in this room. The love of Jesus. Jesus said, you will know them by how much they love each other. It's a room full of lovers. <laughs> Something Pastor Brian said yesterday in our leadership training. He said in the Bible it says, the way it's been translated, it says David, a man after God's heart. But you can actually take out those words, after. You can take out the word after. And a better translation of that phrase is David, God's heart. I don't know about you, but I want God to look at me and say, Tisha, God's heart. And there's something about stepping into that identity and that place of daughterhood and sonship. Ephesians 5 says, be ye imitators of God as dear children. And I was thinking about that this morning. I was thinking about when we were losing everything. It was back in 2008. We were in the mortgage industry, and we went from making a really good income to nothing. <laughs> kind of similar to what's happening right now. And um, not with us, but just in the world, the inflation and all the things that are happening. And um, I remember there was this moment where my son, he said, I really want these shoes. I want them so bad. And, I, and he needed shoes. It didn't make sense financially to go buy him those shoes. But there was something about God's heart that Ben and I just felt this quickening. It's like, you know what? That money should go to something else, but we're going to go buy him these shoes as an act of love from a father and a mother. It was an imitation of who God is, even in the midst of our lack. It was choosing to imitate his generosity in a place of not having much. And I think the normal response to lack is, well, I don't have anything to give. But there's always something to give. <laughs> and there's this verse in uh, 2 Corinthians 9, and Paul says, God loves a hilarious giver. He loves a joyful giver. Why is that? Because when we realize who gave it to us in the first place, we start to feel this joy and this thanksgiving, and then all of a sudden we go from holding on to like a stingy person to saying, Father, you gave me this in the first place. I want to imitate you and give it back. And there's a joy that flows in that. It's, it's not like I'm doing it to please him. I'm doing it as an act of surrender to him and his generosity over my life. And I can tell you that even when we were going through that season, we still gave. We still gave because it says, cast your bread out on the waters. <laughs> and in due season, it will return to you. And there's something about the kingdom and something about being just persistent in this generosity and this giving, even when it goes against what it looks like. So we're going to do the slide together today. And I want you to stand with me. We're going to give hilariously today. We're going to give with, with joy. Can you read that? Let me get, there we go. Okay. Oh. Okay. Shout me down. 
As we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for heaven opened, earth invaded, storehouses unlocked, and miracles created. Dreams and visions, angelic visitations, declarations, impartations, and divine manifestations, anointings, giftings, and callings, positions and promotions, provisions and resources to go to the nations, souls and more souls from every generation, saved and set free, carrying kingdom revelation. Thank you, Father, that as I join my value system to yours, you will shower favor, blessings, and increase upon me. Is that it? I have more than <laughs> to co-labor with heaven and see Jesus get his full reward. Hallelujah! Woo! slide just kept going and going and going and going. Oh, hello, Bethesda. Hey, do we have any first-time visitors with us this morning? Any first-time visitors? If you raise, raise your hand high. I have some individuals that are going to come give you a Connect card. If you fill that card out and turn it into the coffee cart after service, you get a free coffee. It's good coffee, too, y'all. It's good coffee. Um, what do we have? Nothing. There's nothing going on here, guys. There's nothing during the week or planned for the future. No, today is our financial rain class. Um, for those that have that signed up and are partaking, we had sent out an email saying that we were going to be meeting in the sanctuary. This week, however, we are going to meet in the youth hall. So at 1230, you can make your way back there. We're going to get it all set up for y'all um, for the class. It's going to be awesome. Um... Jesus people, where's my Jesus people at? There we go, they're over there and right there. <laughs> and over there. <laughs> Jesus people, our young, that's our young adult ministry. They meet on Fridays. This Friday, Ben and Tisha are going to be speaking at Jesus people. Let's go, so you'll want to go. You'll want to partake of the delicious feast that they're going to prepare. Not real food, but spiritual food. It's going to be really good. We have Kainos Creatives is starting a writing group. Do we have any writers in here? You write, you blog, you write books, you write, I don't know, anything. You just write. You like to write. Journal. I don't care what it is, so long as you're writing. They are starting a writing group that is going to begin on October 13th, 7 p.m. in the youth hall. It's going to be a place for a support for your community, for, for the group just to kind of be like, hey, how do we get past writer's block? How do I learn how to write with Holy Spirit? Um, how do I create an outline for my book or, or whatever? So the practicals to the supernatural to all of it infused in your writing. So it's going to be really good. So if you enjoy writing, I encourage you to, to check that out October 13th, 7 p.m. at the Youth Hall. Beloved Sons. Beloved, where's my guys at? That is for guys. There are more guys than that in this room. Let's go. Beloved Sons, it's our men's ministry. They meet every second Saturday um, Saturday mornings at what time? Y'all meet early. 8 a.m. I was going to say, it's, it's 8 a.m. 8 a.m. This, this coming Saturday, this coming Beloved Sons, we get our very own Ben Strop we'll be sharing. So I encourage you to go check it out. It's going to be awesome. Uh, he's going to share just a wealth of knowledge. And it's going to be really, really good. Beloved Sons also, continue with Beloved Sons. They're doing a movie night. A Western, a Western night. We're going to put on a John Wayne movie, man. We're going to get down there, and we're going to have ourselves just a good old-fashioned hoedown, a showdown, high noon. There's going to be some shooting, riding horses. It's going to be great, y'all. <laughs> That's going to be uh, October 27th, so a Friday night, October 27th, at 6.30 in the youth hall. There is a, um, 
I believe there's an, an event on the Church Center app. You can register. It's going to be five bucks to help cover food because they're going to provide dinner uh, and just have a, have a good time. Wear your cowboy hats, cowboy boots. Come dressed up, ready, ready to go for the movie. It's going to be it's going to be fun. And my, my last announcement is, oh, she's right there. I'm like, she's not there. Tisha got, Tisha got raptured. She's not in her seat. <laughs> How many of you have heard of our Fall Fest coming up? Put your hand up. You, you've heard of it? Okay. You, a lot of you haven't heard of it. So we're going to do, it's, a, it's for the Bethesda family, but it's also really geared as an outreach. So we have flyers out front you can hand out to, to families, people that maybe haven't been to church in a while. This is a great opportunity for the community to come together, um, celebrate. Instead of Halloween, celebrate together on Sunday the 29th. And there's going to be bounce houses, uh, prizes, candy. It's just going to be an awesome. This whole sanctuary is going to be transformed into a, a family fun center. Um, but we need your help. We, we can't do it alone. We need every, every person that calls Bethesda home. We need all hands on deck for this. There's uh, sign-ups out in the lobby here of, of things you can donate, of ways that you can, if you, if you click on the QR code, there's ways to serve. Um, we need, like, we need people in booths. We need people to serve food. So let's, let's do this as a family, okay? Let's do it together. And this is going to be just a great time. We just need everybody's participation in that. So I hope you'll join us. So I have the incredible privilege, <laughs> incredible honor <laughs> of um, bringing up really some apostles. Um, yeah. Yeah. And... Um, just a beautiful couple, not only leaders, missionaries, pastors, Bible translators, I mean, the list goes on and on, prophet, <laughs> just friends. They're, they're dear, dear friends, and we, are, we just feel so rich to have them in the house today. We feel so wealthy, um, and I, I want you to stand up and give them all, <laughs> all the honor. Let's do them. I'm gonna come down. Yep, yep, yep. So I'm gonna come down. Yeah. Brian and Candace Simmons. So so glad they're here. I'm just gonna turn it over to them. Just receive an open heart. Stay standing for a moment, the rest of you. Hop back up for Jesus. He's worth it. Anybody love Jesus here in the house? <laughs> Lift your hands to heaven like you're going there. <laughs> Jesus, you are our magnificent obsession. Take the world, but give me Jesus. We lay our lives before you. We surrender our deepest affections to you. We thank you, Lord, Lord of our days, ancient of days, Lord of eternity. We thank you that our life is in you. Thank you, God, that we are a spirit connected to you. And we have a soul and a body to live on earth, but our spirit is yours. And we give you the highest praise, the deepest love with all of our heart. In Jesus' name, now blow him a kiss if you dare. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Have a seat, everybody. Thank you for joining us. So, Candace, um, you have... Uh, you have surrendered yourself to the Lord in a powerful way, and I get the joy of watching the 52 years of her life of devotion to Jesus. Her prayers have delivered me more than once, and your dreams are just amazing. And we have so many prophetic words for this house and for your pastors. So I'm going to turn it over to you and let you start on some of those dreams, and then I'll give my four-hour sermon later. 
Wow, I've been wrecked this morning. I feel like I had real simple dreams this last night. Usually I have directional or whatever, but they're simple. And I feel like you preached them all through the worship, through both of you coming up. This just confirmation of what you've been saying. And I feel like you're in a really simple time. Of loving God and Him loving you back. That's really where you're at right now. It's a great place to be. I mean, Tish, you are. Tisha, you are God's heart. You are. And so's Ben. You're both, you're both there. And I believe Bethesda, you're God's heart. And He just wants to re establish you in that. And, um, uh, I say to Ben and Tish this, Hebrews 6.10, The Father never forget the work that you've done for him. He remembers the love you demonstrate as you continually serve his beloved ones for his name, the glory of his name. And we talked about this yesterday, but I feel like I'm going to say it again, 1 Corinthians 4.5, When the whole truth is known, you will receive praise from our Father for the way you handle the affairs of the church. And God says, thank you. And to receive praise can be translated thanks from God. Um, and now I'm going to start on the ones for Bethesda. And I'm going to do it quickly, so I'll leave a copy. I always do that for the intercessors. If you get a prophetic word, it's always to be prayed through. So I want you to pray these things back. And you've heard them all already this morning, and they're simple, but they must really be in God's heart for me to get it and for it to be said over and over again today. Number one, I'm coming to kiss Bethesda, I think he kissed you this morning already, but I saw a movie on the plane that uh, was called Love Again, and Celine Dion, I forget how you say her name, she said in one of her lines, and that kiss was like the answer to everything I had been feeling deep down in my heart, and I believe he's going to kiss you, if not today, soon, and give you the answer to everything you've been feeling deep in your heart. That's what God is going to do to Bethesda. He's going to kiss you so tenderly that miracles are going to take place in your heart. It's going to be so intimate, so freeing. So get ready to be kissed by God. Open your heart to him. Number two, I feel like you're in a transition. And I heard the Lord say, good job, Bethesda. Good job. Yeah, give the Lord a clap offering. He's... I mean, it's because of him that you're doing such a good job. And I heard in a dream last night, in quietness and confidence, you will find your strength through this transition. And I feel like you've passed through it, really. I feel today you really passed through that. And I saw lots of dances, all different kinds of dances from the word last night. In my dreams, I saw Joseph, or not Joseph, Jacob arriving at his inheritance, and the angels danced together. They joined together. Two camps is what Mahananim is what they call it in the Bible, and it's two camps coming together. And uh, in the union uh, of Jacob coming together with his brother and with God, and uh, they rejoiced, and they called it the dance of angels. And then I also saw the dance of the Trinity, and they call it, yeah, the quite a dance. It's the dance of the Trinity where they're dancing with one another. They call it the perichoriasis. Yeah. You know about that? Yeah. Perichoresis, however you say it. But I'm, the important thing is that you know what it is. It's where they dance together. They dance around you. They dance in unity. And the Lord said, Zephaniah 317, you all know it. Yahweh, your God, takes such delight in you that it will make you leap for joy He will sing over you with praise. So the Lord is saying, get your dancing shoes ready. You're going to dance with angels and the Father. He's going to move and breathe and have his being in you as you dance together with him. It brings in the intimacy, and your dance will bring joy, unity, and oneness in Bethesda. Isn't that awesome? So get your dancing shoes on. Number four, I heard, keep your eyes fixed on the Lord or on Jesus. Don't compare yourselves to others, for I have set you apart to the, be the best of you. I'm coming to make Bethesda the best version of what my beautiful Bethesda is called to be. You can never be like another church anyway, but you can be like Christ. 
Galatians 6, 4, let everyone be devoted to fulfill the work God has given them to do with excellence, and their joy will be in doing what's right, finding them, uh, themselves, and not being affirmed by others. Number five, and I just lost it. I saw the potter's wheel, and he had, you had your hands on it, and he had his hands on top of yours. And together you are reshaping the pot. It seems good for the potter to make it, and it's going to be even better, I heard the Lord say. Number six, I saw in another dream beautiful construction going on all around you. And the Lord said, for Isaiah 43, 19, I'm doing something brand new, something unheard of. Even now it sprouts up, it grows, and it matures. Don't you perceive it? So I believe the construction going on is people in the spiritual realm. God is, God is going to build something beautiful and new through all of you. And you're going to be so surprised uh, as it unfolds. And you've seen a lot of things, but he's going to surprise you this time. Matthew 16, 18. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. There is no power of darkness can stop the advancing church that Jesus built. The next one is, I saw Mr. Bluebird on your shoulder. I don't know whether I said that another time I was here. It seems like I might have. zippity doo -dah, zippity yay. Uh, some believe that the bluebird is a symbol of joy and hope. Others think that it means good news will soon be arriving. And I looked it up on Google because I thought, I wonder what Google says, says about bluebirds in the scripture. And the first thing that popped up was Psalm 118, 24. This is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. And it said, and this little bluebird is here to remind you to do that, to choose joy. So I prophesy new songs of happiness and hope are coming going to come out of this house and I recently had this strange encounter where I was singing from deep within and I wasn't doing it with my mouth it was coming straight out of me and Bethesda you're going to produce worship that comes from deep within proceeding straight from your heart not your mouth worship that will break break open the heavens and invite you to come up to be with him up close and very personal and I heard quietness confidence. Did I say this before? I don't know. Will be your strength. Okay, so the Lord said to me in a dream, and it wasn't last night, but earlier he said that uh, rest is power. Rest is power. He's saying to you today, it's time to enter into the Sabbath rest, and that's not a person, that's Jesus Christ. And I saw boils being popped, and the Lord said to me, when you surrender yourself to me all the way, the pressure is off. Let me say it again. All the pressure is off. Can you say it with me? All the pressure is off. When you surrender, all the pressure is off. So it's not I, it's not you, but it's Christ that wants to live his life through you. And you can find that sweet spot of rest when you find yourself in Christ. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I have one more, but I'll give it to you guys. How's that? So we can get Brian on. Thank you, honey. Uh, let's have uh, Pastor Ben and Christian, could you stand? We just have some prophetic words. Stretch your hands out to this beautiful couple. Looked like they, Ben came out of GQ and, and uh, Tisha came out of Vogue or something. I don't know. Such amazing couple. And the Lord says, because you have loved my family, I love your family, says the Lord. Because you have cared for my family, I will care for your family. You're going to see multiple breakthroughs in your family. you got a beautiful family now. You wait and see what God's about to do in the next few months. You're going to have breakthrough after breakthrough. Disappointment is going to become delight. God is going to shift some things over you and your house and your finances to show you how much he cares for you. Again, because you have loved my family, I love your family, and I will care for them. I will be their God, and they will be my segula, my treasured possession. That's Hebrew. And so I hear him saying, he's going to smother you with kisses, and he's going to smother your family with kisses. And like Brian said, there are going to be those breakthroughs, and people are going to hear to pray for you. You're going to have more intercessors than you've ever had 
before. The Lord's going to start putting you before people's hearts, and people are going to have dreams about you, things to pray for you. And it's going to be good dreams, not bad dreams, to, because you have a wonderful hope and future, and you're going to fulfill things that were in your great-grandparents' hearts to be done that they didn't finish. And you're going to finish some of those uh, assignments that the Lord gave them that never got finished. And in that way, they are going to finish because you're going to finish for them uh, what they were called to do, and they didn't have the chance to do it. So we bless you. We bless all the things that the Lord has in his heart for you to do yet. And there are many. You have no idea how you're going to bless the masses as you go about just your simple day of doing the things that he's called you to do in confidence and in rest and in peace in Jesus name. All right. As a prophetic act, I hereby surrender whatever offering or honoraria you were going to give to me, whether it was 10,000, 100,000, 5 million or 50 bucks. I hereby surrender that to the two of you Plus, I'm going to start an offering. This is Pastor's Appreciation Month. And you all really need to understand the sacrifice this family has, has experienced. So I'm going to keep my billfold, but I'm going to put some stuff in this billfold right here. Let's see what we got. Here. Well, there's 100. That's all my 100. Okay. We're giving 200 this couple, plus our offering. If you want to come and, and just put it in front of them, we got a basket right behind you coming up. And uh, come on, Bethesda. This is a miracle offering, a pastor's appreciation offering, spontaneous. Uh, I'm not getting commish off of this, so y'all come up. Come on, you got a billfold, you got a checkbook. Give something if it's a dollar, if it's a quarter, or a lot of zeros behind that one. But come and bring an offering. Let everyone celebrate this couple and the life they have spent for you and for the kingdom of God. We honor you. Let's celebrate just real quick, can we? Woohoo! Woo! Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. You got a celebration tune for me? Okay, let's do it. Prophesy, bro. Come on. <laughs> Here we go. Some of you are going to, in the middle of my teaching, you're going to say, you know, I really should have gone up there with something. So you just feel free to do that anytime. No shame, no guilt, no condemnation, just lots of love in the house. We love this couple. And this is going to, this is going to be something in the spirit that's going to shift over their family and over the ministry here. And you've all been very kind to them and you've all loved them. Now show it. Demonstrate that. Hebrews 6.10, I speak it over the two of you, that God is faithful. He will not forget your work and labor of love that you have shown to his people in caring for the flock of God. Hebrews 6.10. This is a Hebrews 6.10 offering over this couple. Come on. Great are you, Lord. Ah. All the earth. Great. Yeah. Are you, Lord. There's their Venmo if you'd rather give a gift that way. Come on. Hey. So that thousand dollar offering you're going to give to me, Venmo, Tisha Strop, right here. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. It's going to will sing. Woo. Great. Come on, where's the dancers? You see your praise. 
So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath Woo. in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So. Oh, come on, what you waiting for? Let's praise him. All right. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Uh huh. Pray, oh, you oh, we're warming up. Come on. We declare, oh, the earth will shout. Oh, oh yeah. Praise. Our hearts will cry, Come on. these bones will sing. Great. your hands and celebrate Jesus. Come on. Hey! The mighty King is here today. The King of love wants to kiss this church. He's coming singing over you and dancing around you with favor and love. Well, some of you believe it. All right. Have a seat. Have a seat, dear friends. Thank you, brother, my friend. So good. So, I'll try to make my six-hour sermon. Did I say six or four? Okay, I'll, I'll try to make it three and a half. Yeah. <laughs> no, we actually have a flight to catch, so we strategically arrange that so that it kind of forces us out the door. But thank you all. I do not feel like a guest speaker at all. This is one of the few churches on the earth that when we come, we feel family with you. And I hope you know that, that we love you, Bethesda. We carry you in our hearts, and uh, we do pray for you. And we, we're in love with your pastors and the team here, the staff, all the way to the soundboard, to the coffee table. You guys are just phenomenal, and we love you dearly. So... Candace and I have been involved for the last 15 years in a translation project that I believe is designed by God to impact the English-speaking world, a dynamic equivalent version called the Passion Translation, and I did not send any books. I forgot to send anything here. So uh, if nothing more, you should understand I'm here because I love you, not to make a dollar or to get an offering, uh, that offering's going to go. So please, whatever you are going to do, maybe the check's already made out, don't know. Or if you're going to take another offering, just let it be for, for you guys and for your precious family. But the uh, project is moving forward. I'll take just a quick second to update you. This morning I was working on Deuteronomy 28, which happens to be 68 verses of nothing but blessing. And that, that uh, chapter just made me think of how much God loves this church, uh, the people. When I say the church, of course, we're not a building or the, the lights or the, the substance, but rather the people, that he loves you dearly. You're on his heart, and he carries you. So um, those blessings are going to be poured out upon you, and we'll keep praying for you when we leave today. But I'd like to speak about this kiss from God. I believe that the love of God, and I somehow feel like every time I come, I give you the same message, virtually, you know, about 
the kiss of God, the love of God, the love revival that is going to sweep over the Northwest. As we speak, uh, U.S. warships are making their way off the coast of Israel. The tension in the land of Israel is so high right now. Uh, we have Heidi Baker is there in Jerusalem along with a friend of ours, Robert Stearns, and others that are hunkered down um, from time to time in bomb shelters. The nations are raging. There's so much hatred in the world, and I don't even have to mention downtown Portland, but there is so much hatred in this world. I'll be a gentleman. I'll be a gentleman. Uh, maybe Seattle. We'll put that up there, but not, not Portland, of course. But, you know, between political opponents, between camps of Christendom, there, there's just so much animosity in the world. The hippie thing in me still burns. I want a love revival. I want a love revival. And that's how they're going to know we're Christians. It's not by our protests and our marches. It's by intimate relationship. The kingdom of God, as my friend told me already this morning, the kingdom of God moves forward at the speed of relationships. Isn't that what you told me? That is so good. That is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to plagiarize that from here on. Like I've always said, the kingdom of God moves forward at the speed of relationships. So the love revival, dude, it, it's got to be you. You know, the person next to you already has it. You're the one that needs it. Or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe you're the one that has it, and the person, don't look at them because it'll embarrass them, but they're the ones that really need love in their life. They need to love their family more. They need to love people that are different. I mean, we've got so much ethnic hatred in this world. Can't we, as the body of Christ, the bride, the lovely bride of Jesus, can we not come together right now over him? And love Him and express that love, that we love Jesus so much. We worshiped Him. It was so sweet. Wasn't that awesome worship? I mean, thank you, worship team, and, and all of you that, that did that, because it brings us closer to God. But that love for Jesus must now go past a song. It must be expressed in our love for one another. Can I get a Baptist amen in this house? The true test of your spirituality is not how many Bible verses you can quote. Bro, I, I probably could outquote most of you, all right? But that doesn't mean I outlove most of you. I want to be, and I've asked the Lord to make me nothing but a bundle of burning hot love for people, for my wife, for my family, for, for strangers, for every person that I am face to face with, that I would... I would express that love and not just, you know, how do we express it? By giving them our attention, by giving them our heart. And the, the people in this room are so needy. You're okay, but the rest of the people in this room are so needy that need the divine kiss. They need a kiss from God. The tender, most tender, you know, sweet thing that you can do for, for another person is to kiss them. And, of course, in the Bible, it's to be a holy kiss, right? So make them holy. But to kiss one another, to express that love. I, I interpret that Romans 16 verse of, you know, greet one another with a holy kiss. I interpret that as metaphoric, that, you know, whether we culturally do that or not, we can spiritually embrace one another in love. We greet one another with the divine kiss. The only holy kiss is when he gives it to them. So when we express and release his love to others, it's like a holy kiss. So, you know, plant a big one on the person next. No, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. So the, the three dimensions of, of what God wants to do on the earth today can be expressed in 1 Corinthians 13, 11. And it's the three things that, that are the highest level of virtues that we'll ever experience. It's faith, it's hope, and it's love. But the greatest of these is love. So we are to actively pursue with all of our heart the highest one, which is love. How passionately are you pursuing love in your life right now? So faith is important, 
And faith is, we all come into the kingdom of God by faith. You know, we believe in the Lord Jesus. It's interesting that John, the gospel of belief, never uses the word faith and never uses uh, belief. It's only a verb. John speaks of believing nearly 100 times in his gospel, and it's always a verb. There's action that we are believing in the Lord Jesus. We are trusting. We're giving him our life. There's a, a Spanish, it's entregar. We're, we're surrendering. We're entrusting our life to the Lord Jesus. So it's so important that we actively have faith. Faith is the key to miracles. Faith is the muscle that pulls the power of God. Don't make me keep going. I'm going to preach at you here. I, I get that Kenyan anointing on me. Where are you, brother? It's coming on me. Hey! I, I love going to Africa. I tell them I'm an African-American. Come on. <laughs> We got to have faith in God. We have to have faith for miracles, for our family, for our nation, for the, for the calamities that are around, your food supply, the, the supply chain, for just uh, our nation itself is in desperate need of women and men of faith to arise. Come on, give me a Lutheran amen. <laughs> amen. We've operated in faith in Jesus. And that's wonderful, but there's another level coming because we go from faith to faith, right? You know what the next level of faith is? We're going from faith to another level of faith. Are you sitting down? Here it is. The next level of faith is not faith in Jesus. It's the faith of Jesus. The faith of Jesus. When the faith of Jesus is in our life, we will operate in a supernatural way, and the works of Jesus will be replicated through our lives. Greater works than these Jesus said, and I know what those evangelicals will tell us, that the greater works are works. They're not miracles. Well, my Lord Jesus, what works did Jesus do on the earth if they weren't miracles? They were miraculous works. Ergo, the Greek word, it can involve miracles. So anyway, we're going to go from faith in Jesus. Your faith is getting upgraded as of today in Jesus' name to the faith of Jesus where it's his, the faith that spoke and the worlds were framed. Hebrews 11 says he spoke in faith and the world was framed and existed. So when we speak in faith with the faith of Jesus, we can see the creative power of God. But there's hope. Hope is what we believe in. We believe in hope. We have a hope-filled gospel, a joy-filled gospel. We have a hope in our hearts that the world does not have. Our hope is so complete, so full, that it'll take us all the way through our 120 plus years we're going to live into eternity. We got hope. And I hope my throat gets healed. Jesus. Anybody wondering? I want to share... So, hope, it's what our belief system really is. Faith empowers the promise of God. It brings the substance of His promise. But hope is what we believe in. God has an answer to every issue, every conflict, every question. Hope is the way into the purpose of God for your life. He gave you a great hope, a living hope, and a door of hope has been opened for you in your valley of trouble. Acor's valley of trouble and affliction is now opening a door of hope. There is an open door in 24 for you to step into a greater hope. You've got to go from one faith to another level, and so your hope must be strong. Don't get your news simply from CNN, constantly negative news. It's not constantly negative news. It's got to be constantly hope-filled, glorious, Jesus rules the earth news. That he's going to win. I've read Psalm 2, the nations rage, and they're going to attack and come against the Lord and his Christ and his people. But Jesus wins. And our hope-filled gospel will take us from, life to, from death to life and from despair to hope, from I hope so to I know so. It has to happen. But the greatest of these is love. 
and all our faith and all our hope pale, combine them, multiply them by ten, they still are not equal to the greatest virtue of all, the greatest of all, which is love. God is love. My, we need more preaching on this. God is love. Just take it like a man. Just take it. God is love. Don't resist it. Don't say, yeah, but, or, or put your little parenthesis, or put your disclaimer to it, your footnote that says, don't take it too far. Quit. Just receive it raw, right out of the can, undiluted. God is love. You don't know God if you don't know love. Some of you need a double. Some of you better take a double on that one. Make it a double. You need the love of God like never before. You're going to have to have it for what's coming in 2024. As you walk through God's open door, get ready to spend some time on the floor. Love is, is, is powerful. It, it brought me out of hippiedom into the kingdom, from LSD to G-O-D in one day. One day, the love of God. I heard the message, the sweet melodies of love. Oh, like a melody swirled around my heart. I was 20 years old, full of decay and decadence. But that sweet melody, it came to me. My ears opened and I heard for the first time in my life a message that this sin-sick soul of mine that had no value in my eyes or in anybody else's, that Jesus bled to death for me. He'd rather go to hell for me than live in heaven without me. That he died so that I could live. He became human so that I could step into the triune glory and be committed and connected to the Trinity for eternity. I'm telling you, that love theology, I'm not going to surrender it for your politics, for your hatred, for your prejudice, your racial injustice. I'm not going to surrender what saved me for eternity just to get into some conspiracy or some political rigor. Listen, Jesus is what the world needs. It's not who's in the White House. It's who's in God's house. And God's house is His temple. And that's us, the living temple of Jesus Christ. So we carry, like Mary, the Christ of glory. We carry the message of love and life forever. We have a message nobody else has. I don't care what YouTube podcaster dude. They don't have anything close to what I have and you have in Jesus Christ. Man, you may want to start your own YouTube channel. I don't know. If you got one, surrender it to Jesus and quit that negativity stuff and start feeding the flock of God the revelation of His love. Love is a crown upon our heads. It makes us royal. It makes us divine. It makes us unique and anointed and special and chosen. We are His treasured possession. It's the segula. To be His segula. He said that to Israel when they were down below the mountain and He looked down at them and saw them. He said, you are my segula. You are my treasured possession. I cherish you. I love you. And He knew they were about to mess up royal. And even after they did mess up, the Lord showed himself to Moses. And it's called the 13 virtues of mercy. The, you know, Christians know nothing about that. But among the Jewish culture, it's huge. The 13 virtues of mercy. And it says Yahweh, Yahweh is compassionate. He's merciful. He loves you. He forgives you. He forgives sin, iniquity, and rebellion. I mean... It's just sin would be okay. Sin, iniquity, and rebellion. He forgives that. That's just days after they were dancing around the calf. And he revealed himself. And the Jews say, when it repeats the name of God, Yahweh, Yahweh, the, the first Yahweh is, I, I, I forgive the sins of your past. And the other Yahweh is, I forgive the sins of your future. Wow, what a scandal. What a grace-filled, glorious gospel we have. Love lifted me, my friend. 
Love lifted me August the 8th, 1971. I'm about to go and leave y'all. But I'm telling you, if you'll let the love kiss of heaven come upon you, you'll never be the same again. You, your wife is going to like you. Your kids will start calling you back up again. Oh, well, it's okay. I, I come and just hang with you. All kinds of things are going to start happening when you just walk in the love of God. Walk in the love of God. Don't worry about taking it too far. You Believe me, you won't. You haven't yet, and you're not about to. It's impossible to take agape too far. If you want to call it sloppy, I'll take your sloppy agape. I'll take it all. Anything you leave here, and it becomes mine. If you, if you think your agape is sloppy, just leave it here, and I'm, I'll take it with me. I mean, love is sloppy. I mean, it's gooey. God wants to bring gooey love into this room. Some of you need to be a little gooey here. That old alpha male thing needs to just melt down to a puddle. <laughs> Days are coming where the Lord is going to manifest His glorious love so greatly. You will not be able, your shield, you're going to lower your shield and you're going to get smacked by God. You're not going to have a defense mechanism that comes up and says, well, I'm, I'm not going to be one of those girly guys. Okay. Since you brought it up. Jesus isn't coming back for a husband. Yeah. I, you know, they, I, I've had... Uh, I've, <laughs> I've had... Some of my friends, and you would know their names, well-known Christians in America, they said, Brian, we really love you, man, but you uh, love your message, but you're, you're like feminizing the church. I, I tell them, Jesus is not coming back for a husband, dude. Got to get over it. I mean, we're all going to be part of the bride of Christ. I mean, we, we can have a beard and be a part of the bride of Christ, okay? We don't have to wear the wedding dress. Ain't going to happen for me, ever. I'll let all of you lovely ladies, you wear those fluffy, wonderful dresses. Awesome. Go for it. I ain't going to wear one. But that doesn't mean I don't have a heart of tender affection. I've been broken. I've been bro I'm out of the closet. I can do this here in Portland. I'm out of the closet. I'm a lover of God. That's all I want to be. I don't care about a title, reserved parking, or an honoraria. All I want is to be a lover of Jesus Christ. I want to outlove every person in here because I'm competitive. That hasn't, you know, I haven't been delivered of that competition yet. I want to be the most loving man in this room, the most loving husband I could be to my darling wife and to my precious three kids and my 11 grandkids. I want to just show them a legacy, an example of love so much that they have to say, Grandpa, stop. Yeah, well, that's my first hour. Let's see if I can wrap this up here by tonight. Somebody tell me the greatest commandment. So how you doing? You breaking, you breaking the commandments? And love is the greatest commandment. You, we got all of our church traditions and our church culture and our church taboos and protocols. Well, about, what about the greatest commandment? Are we going to violate that? Are we going to break that for the sake of, of, you know, not letting a woman preach? Or you, you can't come in here with all those tattoos. And I'm, I'm wearing a coat so you can't see mine, but... I'm telling you, your mama warned you about people like me. <laughs> if love is the greatest, then it should be the greatest passion of your life today, before, you, before the day's over, that you say the prayer, Lord, make me more loving than I want to be. Make me more loving than I dare to be. I move the boundaries. I'm not going to be judgmental, that cranky cruddy, critical Christian guy. I, I want to sweeten like honey as I get older. Now that I'm 40, I want to sweeten 
into my 50s. I want to get sweeter like honey. I want to look around and see people following me because they feel the love of God on me. And I look behind them. I say, you know, you need Jesus. He's the, he's the source, not me. That's what I want. I want to come into a room and a love bomb explodes. Boom. And people are knocked to their knees because of the love expression that pours out of us. Why can't we? I mean, you've been around a cranky person, you know, that guy, that I don't know, Karen or whoever, the, the, that person that, you know, is just throwing a fit uh, at Starbucks or uh, in, the, in the retail stores or whatever. You don't want to be that person. You want to come in to the angry mob and release the glory and power of God. I love uh, Ann Tubbs. She's, she and Mark are friends of ours, and Ann is an intercessor. She's the real one, not pretend. And she went down to the Antifa hideouts and walked downtown Portland where nobody would want to go when it was really at its height. And she would just go and love those people and give them bottles of water and, and tell them the love of God and then pray for them. Yeah. Uninjured. <laughs> God protected her. So you need to know the Greek word for love is agape. But agape is actually a compound word. It's two verbs stuck together in Greek. Ago is to lead like a shepherd leads a flock. It's to lead. And pao is to rest. It's to lead you to rest. Love leads people to rest in the arms of Jesus. It, to lead people into the rest of the Lord. That's what love really is. And are you bringing tension into your family, or are you bringing them to rest? Are you, are you just criticizing the wayward one in your family, or are you providing a place for them to be brought into rest, the rest of love? Love is a shelter. It's a roof over our head. It, it provides warmth and, and shelter for us. It covers a multitude of sins. And I'm just going to keep going until you agree with me. That... A love revival has to sweep over the Northwest. And where there's been hatred and strife, we are the antidote. We're the antidote to the venom of the serpent. And we can bring healing. There's nothing that heals the heart. I know. How do, why am I saying this? Because I know the healing that love did in my life and in my heart. And that frustration and that desire to be, you know, to have the biggest church in the North. East, where I come from, that, that when love hit me, I didn't care anymore. My teaching and preaching was different. I saw the people as the Lord, I asked the Lord to help me, and I began to see the people as the Lord saw them. Man, He loves you. Man, He loves you. How do I say that in Norwegian? Uh, uh, is it Eskar? Elskar? Nas Elskadai. Is that close? Okay, help, help me. I want to get it really accurate. How do I say it? Let me turn my hearing aid up. One more time. Hans? 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 Elsker die. Elsker die. Is that okay? Let's welcome our Norwegian friends here today. We bless you. Thank you for coming. We love Norway. Norge. Oh, my. You're tired. So, Okay, the Greek word agape, but the Aramaic word is woo. The Aramaic word is huba, and huba means love. So when Jesus said to Peter, do you love me, he didn't say agape because Jesus and Peter weren't speaking Greek at that moment. He said it in Aramaic. He said, Peter, do you huba me? And that word huba has two meanings. It means to love passionately, but it also means to light a fire, to kindle flame. So Peter, in effect, was being asked, does your heart burn with love for me? Is there a burning love in your heart for me? Jesus didn't ask, you know, Peter, will you preach a sermon for me? Peter, will you lead a church for me? 
Peter, will you do a miracle for me? He said, Peter, do you love me? What if at the end of your life, all you have left is love? That all you have left, whether you have great substance, I hope you do, or not. But if you live your life on the path of love, you will have no regrets. You won't be there lying in the hospital and all your family around and you spend three hours confessing all the stuff to them. No, they're going to be the ones weeping over you, saying, you showed me the love of Jesus. You loved me when I wandered off. You still loved me. You didn't give me sermons and slip Bible verses under my pillow. You loved me. I, I, I know of people that do that, you know, like, oh, their husband is such a jerk, you know. Well, write a Bible verse, you know. Husbands, love your wives and slip it under the, his pillow and it'll kind of absorb through the pillow and come into him while he's sleeping. Give it up, sweetheart. Just love him in the way you want to be loved and watch it happen. So, interestingly, we're in the hotel this morning and I really am wrapping it up. My third closing. I have three closings. This is, this is number three. I was in the hotel praying for you all and considering what I wanted to share. And the Lord gave me the same verse he gave to my wife, Zephaniah 3.17. So we call it stereo. When Candace and I both get a word from the Lord virtually at the same time, we know it is truly a message God wants you to have. So here's the verse and we'll close with prayer. Yahweh your God is inside of you. He is the warrior savior who takes such delight in you, Bethesda, put your name there, takes such delight in, in Anthony and Kyle and all of us that it will make him leap for joy. He takes such delight in you, it will make him leap for joy just because you got out of bed this morning. It's all you have to do to make God happy. Get out of bed. Just wake up. Start your day with Jesus. And he will shout with great gladness. He will shout with great gladness. He'll take such delight in you. He'll leap for joy. It'll make him leap for joy. And then he will shout with great gladness over your life. Yes, he will soothe you with his love. That word can be quiet. He will quiet you. He'll calm you. He will soothe you with his love. Some of you need some soothing today. You really do. You know, you got that spa music on, your serious radio. You're trying to get soothed. Let me tell you, God will soothe you with his love. He will bring peace to you. And you will become his feast of joyful pleasure. You will be his feast of joyful pleasure. Everybody say, I will be his feast of joy, joyful pleasure. As on the day of a festival, he will sing over you with his song of praise. That's so amazing. Friends, God himself wants to seal it with a kiss. If you would like to experience a deeper understanding of the love of God and reveal it to others in a more powerful way, I'd like for you to come up front real quick. So that would be about 80 90% of us. Come on up. <laughs> Grumpy Christianity went out with like the, the 90s. They went out with COVID. <laughs> now it is a love-drenched theology. The bridal theology must fill our hearts where we see ourselves as the bride of Christ, the radiant look-alike partner, the eternal to die for, lover of his soul. God is after you. I see big bullseyes coming down on a number of you right now, like, like dart targets. <laughs> and he hits the bullseye every time. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, you're going to get a baptism of love today. A baptism of love. Would you like that? Oh, yeah. More, Lord. Touch these precious daughters of Zion. 
touch the women of God. We validate you. We honor you. We say no more. You're going to be stuffed down. You know, keep your voice silent. Just raise kids and go off to the mission field. No. A lioness is still a lion. And you're going to rise up and you're going to roar. And you're going to have a message of love. And to the men, oh, I would wish that anointing of the Kenyan fire would come upon every one of the men in this room. The fire of the preaching and the power of our friends in Africa. The kingdom pullers that pull the heaven into the realm of today. I'll tell you who will change the world. It's going to be lovers not just fighters. And the enemy wants to tell you, don't go too far. You're supposed to be, you know, testosteroneified. You're supposed to be like a warrior. Look, you can be a lover and a warrior. Dude, I have fought for my family. I have done, I, I've been, you know, I won't even tell you. But I, the heart inside of me is a lover. Come on, lift your hand. You're about to get it. (laughs) Such as I have, I give unto you. Lover of God, I write to you, most excellent lover of God. Never was a Theophilus. They just put it, they put the words there, but they didn't translate it right. It's not, I write to you, Theophilus. It's, I write to you, lover of God. That's who you are. Excellent lover of God. Your love is going to grow. It's going to get strong. God is love. The more God is revealed to you, the more revelation of God in your life, the more uh, He's going to be. Who, who is from Russia? I had a dream about Russia. Yeah, I, I know this is the Lord. Uh, I, I heard the song, Home, Home on the Range. And, but it was in Russian. And then I saw in a dream a vision of the lyrics of that song, in Russian. So I we bless our Russian friends. And it, is there any over here as well? I don't want to miss any. Okay. Yes, darling. Yes, you too, my friend. You want to come over here with you may make a friend. Come on, it won't they won't bite. Okay, all of you guys, go over where she is. Yeah, go over where she is. Oh yeah, I'm telling you, your, your mama warned you about people like me. Yeah, just bless her. Him, her, 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 yeah. Her, her, her. Get my pronouns. Okay, one more time. Russians, raise your hands. They're so obedient. (laughs) Oh, yes. Oh, oh, okay. (laughs) Lord, we pray blessing on our Russian friends. Thank you, God. Let America be like home on the range for them. Let it be a sweet home, Alabama. Let it be a home that will be refreshing. Let them feel the love of the church of Jesus Christ. Never let them be lonely again. Never let them have heartache over missing their nation. Lord, would you fill their hearts with special love, unique kiss from God, the preciousness of Jesus to rest upon their hearts. Yes, God. All right, everybody under 100, raise your hand. (laughs) So, Lord, we give our life to you to be a a love slave. To be a doulos, to be a bond slave of love, to be the 1 Corinthians 13 expression on the earth, to be the walking expression of love to our families, to our church family, to our pastors. Lord, to those that are different than us, that live different, vote different. Help us, Lord. It's never, ever wrong to love. Never. Never, never. God will never rebuke you for loving too much. He'll never tell you, stop being so loving. It'll never happen. The height, the width, the length, the depth that goes beyond human understanding. It's incomprehensible. It's furious love. It's raging love. Let the flame divine fall upon us. Let a baptism of love be expressed now into this house. Thank you, Jesus.
come on. Give it up. One more time. This is our benediction. Here we are. Yes, I do, Jesus. And I lift my voice of love to you. He loves you, Bethesda. How he loves you. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Let it be. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Oh, yeah, let it be. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for just a fresh baptism of your love. I pray that it would just only increase, (laughs) just an increase over each and every one of us. I know we have other things that are going on today. (laughs) Whatever we need to do, we'll we'll bump them 15 minutes, we'll bump them 30 minutes. But it's okay just to receive His love. In fact, can we just practice a little bit just taking that love, drenched love that you're drenched in right now and I want you, if you're surrounding Pastor uh, David over here, I I thought I saw him over here somewhere. Surround him. He leaves on Tuesday to go back to Kenya. Come on, surround him. And then uh, Jess, 
Where's Jess Phelps at? Is she here? Jess and the and and the team, they're leaving for India. They're leaving for India this week. Bring them up here and I want you to surround them. I just want you to put your hands on them. Kenya needs a love encounter. Just like America needs a love encounter. India needs a love encounter. Just like America needs a love encounter. There she is. Just surround her. Yeah. And then right here, these two gals, just surround them. Just put your hands on them. They're leaving for Washington, D.C. in two days. Yeah, Brina, whoever's on your team, just right there. Just surround Jess. Jess, raise your hand so they know who you are. Brina, if you're nearby, just get in there too. Just surround them. Let the love conduit, conduit of heaven just flow through you. So we just thank you, Jesus, for what's happened here today. Thank you for Brian and Candace Simmons and coming and imparting into us today. That the lightning rod of who they are was released in here, in this room today. Jesus Christ. <laughs> But just like we ended worship, we're just going to end today fixing our hearts on Jesus and then loving on our neighbor around us. So thank you, Jesus, that you are pouring out your spirit on all flesh. And that the words prophesied today, the words coming out of your mouth would be laced with love. I thank you for lips laced with love. Never ending always increasing. We just thank you, Jesus, that you are the alpha male. <laughs> You're the alpha and omega. And we yield to you as the bride of Christ. Thank you for infusing us with your love. In Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Amen. Feel free to linger in the presence. Feel free to pray for one another today. If you're part of the uh, setup crew for financial rain, you're probably already over there setting up. But if not, we need your help with that. We're just going to linger in his presence. Thank you, Brian and Candace, for ministering to us. Let's give them a hand for just the impartation we, got, we received today. It's always special to have them here in this house. And thank you for blessing Tisha and I today. Love you guys.